almost two years ago now that you said this would be coming. Trees don't grow to the sky. There would be some tapering off in ESPN growth. Uh, that's happening now. You've also said on our program, actually, that the digital alternatives, the mobile experience would replace that over time. Do you have a time horizon about when that will take place, when you'll be making enough of these alternative revenue sources to make up for what you're losing on the basic cable? No, well, you're, you're, you're right to point out that we were candid about this a few years ago. Frankly, I think more is being made of this than it deserves. ESPN is still a very, very healthy, very, very profitable business, one of our most profitable uh, businesses. It has a stable of live sports that it has licensed for a long period of time that is going to serve it extremely well, that is serving it well today on its traditional platform, that is starting to serve it well on new platforms, and that will serve it well for the foreseeable future. It is a product that is in demand. And the fact that there is still a lot of competition for live sports rights, I think, only points out uh, just how valuable this product is. And no one's got more of it uh, than ESPN. What's happening is exactly what we thought would happen, and that is that there is a, um, a decrease in the number of expanded basic subs on traditional platforms. That's happened for a few reasons. The expanded basic product is uh, relatively uh, more, well, certainly more expensive than some of the products that have launched on the new platforms and has more channels than many people believe they need. It still dominates, by the way, the business. More people are expanded basic subs than, and, and, than anything else, but it's definitely decreasing, and we're starting to see some share shift from that, the large uh, bundle, so we should call it, at a you know, price that is typically in excess of $100 to smaller bundles that are launching on mostly new platforms, over-the-top, digital-only platforms, in some cases platforms that are very mobile-friendly and very, very user-friendly. And that's attractive certainly to younger people, not just because of the cost, but because of the usability factor. And that bodes well for us. We're seeing some nice growth, but some of these platforms are brand new. YouTube just launched theirs a, a month ago, and Hulu just launched theirs this week. And so it's still too soon to say, uh, you know, when lines will cross or when that will, I'll say, pick up the slack that uh, has been created by some sub losses on the other side. But we're encouraged by the signs that we see. We believe we've got great product to offer. The distributors know that live sports is imperative for them to succeed in that space. And that's why they're negotiating deals that have ESPN on all of their subs. This is only the beginning and it will continue. And frankly, we're feeling very optimistic about it. I think the reaction to it suggests otherwise, but that's not the case with us. And we've taken a number of steps to contend with exactly what we're seeing. This is not something that we're just getting to. It's something we've been working on for a few years. And I think it's high time that people start looking at ESPN in a very positive way and not a negative way. Think about how mobile devices are being used and what for, as a for instance. Uh, that live sports window or that, live, that player that has live sports on it is very valuable when you're sitting with a smartphone or, or a tablet or a laptop, whether you're in your office or in okay. a bus or uh, wherever. And, and I just think that um, uh, the, the pessimism about ESPN is, is highly exaggerated.